Have you two kissed and made up, by the way? By the way? You, you had your odd moment on commentary together. <laughs> you know, you? Nas, this whole of India will see that. I put my hand on <laughs> Nas's shoulder when I was going to do work for Sky. The first question, are you going to be doing commentary with Nas? <laughs> I, I, I said, for Christ's sake, why not? You know, no, 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 no. But do you talk to each other? You know, you've had... It doesn't mark you out, by the way, that you've fallen out with Nas. Everybody's fallen out with Nas over the years. Nasm. Anyway, the Nas and show. <laughs> we, we might talk about Indian cricket because clearly you've been right at the heart of it for the last six or seven years, both as director of cricket, head coach of the Indian team. You're now back in the commentary box. Just um, when you look back now at that period in charge as head coach, how do you look back on the period? Do you see it, A, as a personally enjoyable one? Clearly, it was a very successful period for Indian cricket. What, what were the high points for you? I think it was uh, very rewarding. You know, it's a, it can be a thankless job because uh, you judged every day of your life by 1.4 billion only, you know, and, uh, you know, there's no hiding away from it. You know, there's nothing to hide behind. You know, you, you face the bullet. You know, it, performances matter day in and day out. You got to win. You got to win. You got to win. You know the expectations are big, but the way the boys responded, you know, I, when I look back at my tenure, or those seven years that I was there, you know, I've, I'm proud that I had a team that responded in the fashion they did. You know, when I did take over, they weren't playing the best of cricket. You know, as those rankings will show. But towards the end of it, you know, they were right up there in all formats of the game, threatening. If anything, they didn't win a World Cup in that tenure of you know, when I was there. But otherwise, I mean, some amazing performances, you know, around the globe, in uh, in different countries, in white ball cricket, in red ball cricket. You know, nothing beats the two in Australia. Mm. You know, two back-to-back -back series wins in Australia. You know, that's the icing on the cake. Then, of course, leading uh, in the series in England uh, last year. And the team took pride in playing red ball cricket the way they did. And Virat must be complimented for that because he led from the front. He wanted to play in that fashion. The fast bowlers responded. You know, then you could see players evolving during that period of time. You know, the Jadejas, the Rishabh Pants, the Shubman Gills came through the ranks, class player, plenty of them still there, you know, evolving. And no better person to take over after me than Rahul. Mm -hmm. Because I think I got that job by mistake, which I told Rahul, because I was in the commentary box, I was asked to go there, and I did my bit. But Rahul is a guy who's come from the... Through he's the done system. the hard yards, through the system. He's been coach of the under-19 team. He's now taken over this Indian team, and I think he'll enjoy it, you know, once the team starts responding to what he's saying. I think the game changes, Nas. Obviously, it's quite a, a while since we played. When you, when you look at the Indian team now, compared to the kind of team that we played against, which had some great, great players in there, Dravid, Tendulkar, Laxman, these guys, ha, ha, what do you see as the principal differences? Ravi mentioned the fast bowling quartet there. Would you say that would be a, a key yeah, difference? Obviously, and that's driven by Virat as well, because <clears> fitness and fast bowling go hand in hand. You look at them, they're stronger, they're fitter, they bowl longer spells. But I think the key for me has been depth, the depth of cricket. So when we played against India, they had their greats and they had some very good players and players maybe have come from the same states. Mumbai was a very strong state for producing cricketers and I did that cricket in Mumbai mm -hmm. program with and we spoke to Ravi about it. And he said the biggest change, I'm not putting words in your mouth, now because of Dhoni and various other cricketers, all over, because of IPL, all over India, you're finding cricketers. So when you look at this Indian side now, even though Kohli's had a quiet couple of years, then someone else will pick up the mantle and take it on. And Rishabh Pant plays in innings like that. And Jadeja. So the depth to Indian cricket, because now cricketers are coming from the Maidans of all over India, not just Mumbai or Delhi or whatever, uh, and because of the IPL. The IPL must have just had a massive, massive impact. We'll, we'll talk about cricket. that in a minute. Can I just ask you one question? You, you mentioned it when Rob Key got the job for mm. England. You did a good piece with Ali Martin in The Guardian and you said he'd better develop a thick skin. Yeah. As coach, did yeah. you have a thick skin? Did you need to develop one? Did you ever feel like going back at people or not? As I, I, I started at 18. By the time I was 21 playing for India, I had a skin that was as thick as anything. So, you know, nothing fazed me. You know, and that helped me when I was coach of India because, to be honest, nothing bothered me. And the last thing I was worried about was media. You know, I said, if the boys perform, media will react the way they want. You know, if you don't do well, they've got every right to smash you. But if you do well, you know, you will get the uh, accolades. And uh, our job was very simple. What 
the media didn't like about Indian cricket that the fact was that we were bullies at home and we didn't play great cricket when we went overseas. So the job for me with the team was to prove them wrong, you know, and say, how are you going to do it? So you sit with the team, sit with Virat, say, how are we going to do that? You've got to take 20 wickets. As simple as that. Take the pitch out of the equation. Both teams play on the same surface. You get your 250, 275, then look to take 20 sticks. That's the way you're going to win the game. Now, what is the combination needed? You need fast bowlers. Mm -hmm. You can't live on a spin diet and expect to win overseas. You're not going to get the pitches for that. So horses for courses, 20 wickets, get the fast bowlers in, get the right combinations and be ready to have a stomach for a fight. Fascinated to get a sense of how Indian cricket has changed. I mean, your career lasted around about 81 to the early 90s. And of course, there's always been the passion for cricket in India and Indian cricketers have always been held up almost as, as godlike figures. But of course, there wasn't quite the money in the game in that period. I reckon one of the most significant games in, in cricketing history, actually, was the very first game on satellite television, which mm. was on an India tour of 93. So you'd just Correct. finished. It was the first one day international in Jaipur. That was the very first game that wasn't televised on Doordashan. And suddenly that was the start of the satellite television revolution and all the money coming into the game. And so whilst the passion was always there, it is a very different game now in India, isn't it? Very difficult, very different game. It's uh, done wonders to the players and I'm happy for that more than anything else. It's helped the game to evolve into the other formats of the game, where the cash cows are the, uh, the white ball formats, the 2020s, the 50-50s. They get in the money, the IPL. But what it does, it helps to sustain the first-class cricket in the country. And, you know, the administrators in the BCCI have realised that. You know, so there's, uh, they realise the importance of red ball cricket and the importance of white ball cricket. The important thing now is to be able to balance it and get you know, the right kind of mix so that, you know, Indian cricket is good in all three formats of the game. Well, let's talk about that balance because the IPL is expanding. We've just seen two new franchises being bought for extraordinary sums by private equity. Um, and so the competition is growing and getting bigger. Um, the most recent television rights, both for digital mm. Mm. Um, and the main rights have gone for extraordinary sums. Mm. So it seems to me that it's only going to get bigger and bigger and, ex and expand more and more. So therefore, how, how do we build in protections for first-class cricket, red ball cricket, if indeed we think those protections should be, should be there? I think it's very important to get the right balance of how much cricket is played across three formats. You know, how important uh, bilateral series in T20 cricket or in one-day cricket as opposed to World Cups, Test cricket. You know, so once you curtail those bilaterals, you'll get more time for Test cricket. You'll get a corridor, even if IPL extends by two weeks. There's a corridor for that. And then you will get tremendous importance being laid to the ICC tournaments, like the World Cup. I mean, exactly like it, it's, it'll have to go. You know, we're lucky to have three formats with all three working at the moment. But in future, it will have to go the football way, you know, where all the, you know, you see the other sports around the world where emphasis is on a World Cup. So there's a lot of, there's very little bilateral when you look at football. You know, it's, it's you have a lot of leagues being played across the, you have the EPL, you have the Spanish League, you have, you know, Copa America or things of that sort in South America. Then you got the big tournaments, you know, the World Cup. And so when a World Cup comes, it's massive. You know, it's not something that's happening every day or every second, every year or something of that sort. And that is the only way you'll sustain test cricket. You know, you've got to realise what is the most important format of the game. For me, the biggest thrill was these youngsters in this Indian cricket team, they might be hearing it in the dressing room now, they love test cricket. And when the youngsters in India realise that they love red ball cricket, you know, they want to emulate them. They want to be the Kohli's, the Rohit Sharma's this of the future. It might have taken certain players a while to embrace the red ball format. Someone like Rohit, you know, but once he tasted success in that format of the game, he wanted to belong. He wanted to be there. He's captain of the side. Avi mean, talks there about the, the football leagues and perhaps the similarity with football, but I guess the difference would be that 
whilst the Premier League in England might be bigger than the La Liga and, and other football leagues, there's not quite the imbalance that there is in cricket. So the IPL and cricket in India is so big. And then you've got the other competitive nations like the Caribbean with population 5 million, New Zealand population 5 million. So it's the kind of imbalance in cricket that presents some difficulties down the line. Yeah, huge. It has its, obviously, it, its upsides. And you look at a lot of England's white ball success, mm. it's uh, self-perpetuating because when, once they started playing well under Morgan, before that, no one wanted any England mm. players for the IPL. Once they started playing well, the likes of Bairstow, Butler, Roy, all of them, Curran, then the IPL want them, and then they become even better white ball cricketers, and then they go on to win a World Cup. But the flip side of that is like a side like the Caribbean, where the IPL impacts their main time of the season, and they are not on massive contracts with their home board. It is, here's a million dollars for eight weeks' work, here's 40 grand for your West Indies contract. I'm exaggerating. Mm. Then your eyes are turned and your head is turned and you're always going to go in that direction, however much you are a proud West Indian or any other nation, really. So it is different for different nations. The question I'd ask you, Ravi, is that it was so obvious last summer with your two opening batters that you sent out that door in Rahul and Rohit, they are brilliant white ball players, mm. but they had a brilliant red ball technique. And I see that in Indian cricket all the way through, that they've managed to keep all that, all formats, multi-dimensional cricketers. Um, do you still think that will carry on like that? Or do you think Indian cricket needs to keep an eye on that? Because of IPL, a lot of youngsters will go, do you know what? I'm going to go in that direction and worry about my white ball skills. You always will have to keep an eye on it, you know, because there will be transition. You know, there'll be new players coming through the ranks. So it's uh, important to keep them uh, interested. That's why 100 yesterday, 146 from someone like a Rishabh Pant at 24 years of age, you know, really augurs well for all the youngsters. You know, they want to play. They want to be like him. You know, they want to set the red ball stage alight. And when you're talking of Rohit and Rahul, there's a lot of hard work put in there by them too. You know, with the batting coach, Vikram. Last year, I remember we were in Durham for about three weeks. Mm. And... Rohit and Rahul both practiced and practiced. They understood they have to leave a lot in England. They have to keep the good balls out by trusting their defense, you know. And they had all the shots because of the white ball game. So if they saw that initial period through and the ball didn't swing and the sun did come out and the conditions were good for batting, they could make up. They could up the ante. But they realized in their head there's no shortcut. You know, you've got to put in those yards in the net. You know, you've got to look ugly. You've got to be beaten five times in six balls with a Shami and Bumra coming at you with a new ball. And even though you look ugly, but once you get the hang of it, then, then you start enjoying it. Um, just take a look outside for a minute. Umbrella's up, which is not great news. The covers and the sheets still on, so I can't imagine that we'll be starting imminently. So it's a good time to keep chatting about Indian cricket, which is fascinated. I've certainly been fascinated by the character of Virat Kohli, mm -hmm. who obviously was the captain under, under, your, um, under your tenure as coach. Just talk to us about that relationship. Who, who ran the show, you or him? Captain is always the boss. It's our job, you know, with your experience, with your uh, knowledge of being around the circuit for close to four decades, to impart that knowledge. And it's, it's combined. You know, the assault is combined. You know, and luckily our mindsets were pretty similar. We were pretty aggressive in our mindsets, the way we thought, the way we wanted the game to be played. You know, the, like you mentioned, the fitness values that had to be gotten. You know, there were yo-yo tests and things of that sort, which at times the players detest, detested. They said, oh, and we've never done that. Staff, That's no not doubt. going to improve our cricket. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they realize that it's, it's showing in your performances, you know, out there. You know, it's clearly showing how, what it, a difference it's made, especially the fielding. You, I mean, I've never seen an Indian fielding side hmm. like they were in those three, four years. You know, catching everything, run outs coming, you know, running between the wickets, improving. And it makes a massive difference. You know, those 10, 15 runs you save in white ball cricket in an innings. You know, makes all the difference in big games, you know, against good sides. You, you played against lots of great players and, and very charismatic cricketers. I'm thinking of the likes of Viv Richards and Imran Khan. Mm. 
Um, I don't think I've seen a cricketer play with quite the same level of intensity, both off the field in his, in his training and on the field, uh, as Virat Kohli. W do you, would you agree with that assessment? I think Vivian has pomp had that quite a bit. You know, he had that pride that, you know, that aggression was there for everyone to see. Modern day and era, it's Virat. Mm. I mean, it's almost single-handedly he feels he has to do everything. And, and yeah. therefore, the impact upon him, we put a stat up before the start of play on the first day about the number of games that he's played since 2016. I think he's played 321 oh. games, which is all internationals and IPL. So he's playing them at 100 miles an hour in the kind of goldfish bowl that is Indian cricket as captain across mm -hmm. three formats. Would you simply put his relative decline in form in the last year or two down to simple burnout? Simple burnout, mental burnout. You know, no question about that because he's played more cricket than any other Indian. Uh, because of his fitness levels, he's never broken down. He's played all formats of the game. Plus being captain, that added pressure, you know, of performances. And it's going to take its toll. You know, when you're mentally tired and you're pushing yourself, therein lies the chance of making the biggest mistakes. You know, you can make mistakes. You're human. You're allowed to. You're going to learn from that. But you're, that's when those mistakes will happen. You know, it could be in batting. It could be the way you behave. It could be you losing your cool with somebody, you know, saying something out of place, out of turn. You know, things of that sort can happen when there's a burnout and when that extensive pressure is there of the bubble and quarantine. Uh, so uh, that break, I think he needed more than anything. Would there be a, a pressure on him from BCCI or elsewhere to keep playing all formats? I'm thinking about perhaps the <laughs> Tiger Woods in, in America. You know, they say when Tiger Woods is playing a golf tournament, television ratings go through the roof. I mean, I'm assuming that is similar with Virat Kohli. Oh. You know, once he's on screen in the IPL, the television ratings go through the roof. So if he wanted to take a break, say he wanted to just step away from a format or take a break for a month or two, how difficult is that for him? It, it is difficult because the sponsors will first, uh, you know, come into play. Of course, the BCCI will also this thing. But I'm sure the BCCI at the back of their mind know the amount of cricket players are, uh, are played. And they're quite prepared to give them a break. You know, if, if a white ball game is played, there's no Virat Kohli, there's no Rohit Sharma, there's no KL Rahul, there's no Rishabh Pant. Suddenly, you know, all hell will break loose. So how do you space it out? You know, make sure you have balance both. You keep the, keep the sponsors happy at the same time, the board happy. And uh, yet at the same time, ensure that your team is at strength, good strength every time they go out and play. Um, we have a bit of news. If there's no more rain, then play will restart at 1.15. I've actually no idea what time. Well, you've got a watch on, Rav. A very uh, flashy-looking watch. What ten time to is one. it? Ten, ten to, to one. one. Yeah. Um, just sorry. Just to tell us one thing that England fans, and maybe even England cricketers don't realise that much, is the pressures off the field mm. in India. He mentioned a goldfish bowl. Just explain to our viewers what it's like being an Indian cricketer away from cricket in India. Do you ever have any time to yourself? Can you ever get away from cricket? Does it do you ever does it ever get you down, basically? However much the fans love you and they ask in a really nice way for your autograph and photograph, it can become all encompassing. How difficult is it being an Indian cricketer in India? It's uh, compared to Ira, when you see it now, it's chalk and cheese. Yes. It's chalk and cheese because the spotlight is so much. You know, the there's, today, there's, the platforms are so many. You know, when we played the game, there were one or two television channels. There was the print media. Today, you've got the print, electronic, digital platforms. You've got social media. You've got news channels. You've got 40, 50 news channels there, you know, each wanting a bite of you. And, and you're human. You know, you can speak to one, two, three people. Plus, there are press conferences. Plus, there are, you know, things you have to do for the sponsors. So, you know, your time on your hand is very limited. And how you use it is, uh, it is of utmost importance. So there's going to be a tolerance level. And after a while, there'll be zero tolerance level. <laughs> you know, once, they, once there's Just too go, much of To it. go back to the IPL for a minute, I'm, I'm assuming that it's been expanding. It can't go into June because that's monsoon season and, yeah. and you know, conditions are unbearable heat-wise in June. But there's thought that the IPL might look to expand into America, say, and have a second edition of the IPL. How, if you're thinking, throwing forward to 
years to come? How do you see it? I think you'll have, uh, you could have two formats. You know, if 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 it's bringing in the bucks and it's uh, popular and it's helping Indian cricket evolve in the other formats of the game, by all means have it. You know, have an extended season with a proper season where all ten teams play against each other. You know, once, uh, twice. So make that one season, and you can expand and make it a smaller tournament like a knockout, like a World Cup format, anywhere in the world, overseas. You know, if 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 it's raining in India, it's too hot in India. There are multiple places, especially evolving countries, where you can go and play that, help the game in that part of the world. You know, maybe share the profits with. So, do you think Indian cricket has a responsibility to the rest of the world? You know, they've talked about having a test fund for struggling nations. How far does India, as the as the kind of giant of the game, where 80 or 90 percent of the game's revenues are produced, how much is there a responsibility to help? I think it's else? only fair to have a responsibility. You know, a very important responsibility because, you know, when the economic curve is swinging in your direction, and the bucks are coming your way, it's important not just to be happy with what you're making and keep it to yourself, keep an eye. There's also the an well. enlightened self-interest here, Nas, well, because yeah. you need a competitive Correct. environment. Correct. Otherwise, everybody will get bored with yeah, it. No. Absolutely. Uh, you can't just have the same sides playing against it. The other point is not just uh, how important it is to the world game, but to Indian cricket, that money at the top, the IPL money, the, the ridiculous amount, does that get filtered down enough in your book? down to grassroots level, down to facilities, down to first-class, ex-first-class players that may not have had it so lucky, who have fallen on hard times, stadiums, you know, the viewing experience. Sometimes in India there was a game in Bangalore recently when it rained and everyone's getting drenched. Can more be done by that money? It will be done. I think I'm sure the, the administrators are looking at it. You know, they, they know the importance of uh, making it spectator-friendly with the kind of people that come in, the volume of people. So they will be looking into all that. And so if 100 bucks was filtering down, now with the amount of bucks coming in, maybe 500 bucks. <laughs> well, it's great to see you, Rav, back Pleasure. in the commentary box. And, King and, and of the Nass. commentary box. And I'm with Nas, guys. Mate, India, uh, I'm with, with Nas. Nas. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a 115 restart, assuming that there is no more rain. But while we wait for that restart, let's take you back to last summer and the Oval, the fourth Test match of